One of my daughters, she always says, I sleep better because my husband's home. Uh, I just sleep so much better. You know, anything that makes a man feel like he has a place in your life, that he makes a difference in your life, that's what allows him to bond to bond with you and that's the first stage is attraction in every relationship in my book Mars Venus on a Date I do explore in more great detail these five stages of dating the first mm-hmm. stage is there's this attraction stage and you could kill the attraction by pursuing him more than he pursues you um, second stage is when there's some something going on then naturally meaning that you think this might be the one he's thinking about you you might be the one then then that he'd be in a committed relationship with and explore further then you tend to shift into stage two where doubts come up it's normal when you're thinking of getting in a committed relationship with someone to start having doubts and for men at that point it doesn't mean you can't pursue the relationship's not going to go further it just means he's going to have feel a little stress and you're going to feel a little stress you know like oh well, gee is this really the right person one of you starts to feel this doubt and the way men react to it is they become disconnected to their emotions it's basically they start to withdraw a bit they lose their attraction for a little bit a woman starts to feel more emotional she starts to feel a little more needy at that time and she might pursue him and say at that moment what's the matter where are we going let's talk about the relationship she says that at times when she's doubting it's the worst thing to say whenever you feel like you want to ask a guy you know where are we going you know let's talk Mm -hmm. about the relationship that's the time to not talk about the relationship it's to give him space let him pull away for a little while while you do something to make yourself happy and you ask yourself the question instead of the question is You know, do you love me? Do you like me? Do you want to be in a relationship with me? You need to ask the question of yourself. Do I like him? Do I want to be in a relationship with him? That's the question, not what does he think. It's what do you think? What do you feel? But before you get to that place, go do something that makes you happy. You know, this is you never want to come across or be in the situation where you depend on him for your complete level of happiness. And you've got to balance that with, I have a life that makes me happy. He then pulls away. He, If you don't pursue him, he, spring, he springs back if you're the right person for him. And he will, he will, he'll show his interest again. Maybe he doesn't call for a couple of weeks. Don't punish him. Don't slap his hands. Don't say, why didn't you call me? How could you do that? Even if you feel it, talk to a girlfriend about it. When he calls, say, oh, good, I was just thinking about you. You know, I've had such a good time this week. Let him always see you as a positive being uh, before you show the part of you that that maybe gets upset about things, wants to ask for more or whatever. You want to start with this place of unconditional acceptance that, that, that pulls him back in, pulls him back in, and then you have appreciation when he does the right things. So when you get through the doubting stage, then you get into the stage of commitment and the challenge there oh boy you can challenge because that's when men become real lazy unless you do this handle this right he's like feeling Mm. like okay now i've won the race you know now i can relax i climbed the mountain now i can (laughs) take a nap (laughs) it's, it's important at that point to make sure that you don't spend too much time together that he's having to pursue you otherwise he just kind of waits till friday night and says what do you want to do what would you like to do he sits around. He doesn't have the energy and motivation to please you anymore because he thinks he's done his job. That's where you really have to begin asking more, asking for more, and be careful not to give more than you're getting. Because if you give more than you're getting, you'll start to feel resentful. And when you feel resentful, you lose your ability to appreciate what he has to offer. You lose your ability to have unconditional acceptance and appreciation, and he loses his attraction for you. So that's the dance in stage three. Then you get to stage four, where you begin to be more emotionally intimate, where you're no longer putting your best foot forward, but you're also sharing more about your vulnerable feelings. And I've written whole books on how to do that. But the art is, if you share things that are like frustration, disappointments, concerns, embarrassments, regrets, you know, um, painful moments that you've experienced in your life or in your relationship or at that time in your life, what you want to do is make sure to share the good and the bad. And when you share the bad, focus, at least in the beginning stages, never sharing anything 
which rejects him, which he might feel criticized, he might feel rejected. But start out by sharing things about your life, your work, uh, your frustrations at work, your disappointments, your concerns, your embarrassments, those kind of feelings, and just say to him, oh, I'm so glad to talk to you. I just want to talk about my day, what happened. And, you know, it, it might sound like I'm asking for help, but really the biggest help I need is I just want to, you know, you to be a sounding board. I can just talk about this. And then you talk about it for like six, seven minutes, then talk two or three minutes about how much, how good your job is, how much you love your job, appreciate talking to him, and go in for a hug. Uh, and he'll be one, he'll be amazing. This woman can be upset about something, and then she comes back and she's so positive. Wow, that's an amazing woman. And she appreciates me for listening. I, I like this. I like this job and I like this woman. So he bonds with you because he feels he's helped you, but he sees that you have the ability to be upset about things, but then come back to positive feelings. The part of you that's upset about things says that I am affected by things. I'm not this Superman that can do everything without feeling anything, but I'm a, I'm a vulnerable person, and you are a vulnerable person. So it's not to fake it. It's to be authentically who you are, but sharing with him the authentic female side of you, which is affected by things. Things. And then, you know, it's not like you're asking for help to solve the problem. You just want to share how you feel, the tender feelings, and they don't have to be big. You know, if you if you suppress all the little feelings, then it has to be some big problem you have to talk about. But if you have big problems, you talk about that. But come from the place at least several times of talking about feelings and see he can witness you going from negative feelings to positive feelings, and it's not about him. But he feels he's helped you. And in many of my books, I call that the Venus talk, where women really go over to their female side and show some vulnerability. Boy, men don't forget it. They love it. They bond with you. But only if you if you shift from the negative to the positive. That's where they feel like, wow, I helped her to do that. Yeah, and I think this isn't always real intuitive either because I think so many of us as women, when we're dating a man, we want to have him be impressed with us and we want to come across as having everything all together all of the time. And I know in my work with women, I'm often asked about this whole vulnerability piece. And I think it's a little tricky, particularly for a lot of women, to be able to show that side of themselves. And I like what you've said here so much about this because I think what we're talking about here, both in being able to express our wants, our needs, to show our vulnerability, and allowing for that time and space for a man to step up and be a man, is that we're allowing more or less a sacred space for a relationship to develop and for a man to have that opportunity to step up, be the man that he chooses to be for you, and then for you to decide if he's the right man for you. And if we try to rush that process or we are afraid to ask for what we want or need or we're afraid of showing vulnerability, that sacred space often doesn't exist. Or another thing we do is we give too much too fast too soon. Wonderfully said. You know, I always love doing these (laughs) talks with you. I think you're absolutely brilliant in what you do. Oh, Uh, thank you. That's so uh, kind. What a compliment from you, John. (laughs) You do such a good job. I mean, wow.